Hey guys, Ivan here and this video we're gonna start with some pretty sad news I would say. I was hoping I was never gonna make this video but I have to be honest, I was kind of nervous when Nick Walker started working with Fuad when he signed for Hostile. How is this going to end? Because as you can see it ended pretty badly. Unless you're living under a rock, you probably heard already that Nick Walker is no longer with Hostile Supplements. If you guys follow my channel, you know I'm a huge fan of Fuad Abiyad and his YouTube channel and Bro Chat series is one of my favorite podcasts on that channel and basically Bro Chat is Fuad Abiyad along with Guy Sternino and Nick Walker and whoever else shows up but those three guys are the original Bro Chat and now it seems like that era is probably over unfortunately very unfortunately bro chat will never be the same without nick now i'm not 100 sure this is going to be the case that nick is out of the podcast but it most likely is before i tell you whatever i think and whatever i know about the relationship between uh, nick walker and fuad abiyad i'm gonna play the little video that nick made not the whole thing of course i'm sure you watched it it's been posted yesterday but just a few short interesting parts which i'm gonna discuss in this video hear this out guys for him to have the video out to make it seem like I don't want to meet my supporters actually hurts a little bit. Um, and that's just, it's just not the case at all. I think that was a little on call for it. Um, and honestly, it just comes down to the vision. Listen, when he has this vision for Hostile is just technically not a vision the same vision I have for a company, you know, we just, we didn't, we don't see eye to eye. You know, after I got back with Matt, obviously there was a lot of um, speculation if I was gonna get back with Raw and Revive. Honest to God, there was no talk of me going back to Raw and Revive. There was no talk. So he asked me, do you, are you gonna resign again in March with Hostile? I said, probably not. I just wasn't happy with the company. My heart with Hostile just was not in it. There's, you know, I have nothing bad against Fuad. Again, I consider Fuad still a good friend of mine. After I told him, no, I don't think I'm going to resign. I was just being honest. That's it. I just wanted to be honest. I didn't want to lie. I didn't want to sugarcoat. I wanted to just be honest. I was still willing to fulfill the whole contract. And, you know, but he wasn't, you know, he didn't want to do that. So to sum things up, basically Nick Walker said to Fuad that he's not going to sign the contract again when it ends and because of that Fuad stopped working with Nick immediately and he's referring to the video that Nick Trigili from Bodybuilding and BS made and I don't know, I find this very suspicious because in that video Trigili says that he talked to Fuad and Fuad told him that Nick Walker wasn't willing to travel, to go to meet and greets, uh, to be at the boot and stuff like that and he basically bad-mouthed Nick Walker to Nick Trigili, which doesn't make a lot of sense because ever since I know these two guys, Fuad always really hated Nick Trigili. They were like always enemies, you know, basically. So I don't know why Fuad would badmouth Nick Walker to somebody like Nick Trigili. Doesn't make any sense to me. So this does not mean that it's actually true, and I don't know why Nick Walker really believed it immediately. Also, Trigili is known for his clickbait videos in which he doesn't necessarily always say the truth, so honestly, I'm, I'm a big fan of Fuad, I, I like Fuad, and I don't know if this is actually true, what Nick Trigili had to say, but in any case, Nick Walker took offense to this. He said that that's not true, that Nick Walker was always willing to do all the appearances, to show up at the booth, to do meet and greet stuff, but let's say that was a lie, let's say that was fabricated, let's say that's not true. Even still, Nick Walker ended a contract before it was officially over, I mean Fuad ended it instead, because Nick said he has no plans of continuing, because his heart is not in the company, he doesn't really like what hostile company is all about, what I'm thinking is probably he wasn't paid well enough, uh, hostile supplements is not exactly the biggest supplement company in the world, and Nick Walker is the most popular bodybuilder in the world, period, not the most popular fitness personality, probably Chris Bumstead is up there and maybe some other guys, but as far as open bodybuilders, Nick Walker is definitely the number one, for sure, so he can be sponsored by the biggest companies in the world and his contract is supposed to be really high, really well paid. 
I don't see what would be the problem with Hostel Supplements Company because it's a hardcore bodybuilding supplement company. It goes well with Nick Walker, who is a hardcore bodybuilder. I don't think that was the problem. I think it's only money. I believe so. I think it's only money. I don't think Nick is going to say that, but I think that's simply it. But there is the other side as well. Before I say this, I gotta say I'm a huge fan of Fuad. I think what he has done for bodybuilding industry in the past couple of years is so, so amazing. It was like one of the biggest influences uh, to young bodybuilders this past couple of years. He was so important. I'm so grateful to him. I honestly can't even put it into words. Currently, I am prepping and what I'm doing while I'm doing cardio and I'm doing my steps... I listened to all the Bodybuilding and Bollocks series with Luke Sando, may he rest in peace, and Fuad Abiyar, because I'm such a big fan. I watched the series like five times so far, and I always enjoy it. It makes me calm, it makes me comfortable. I, I'm, I'm a, such a big fan of the podcast, I can't even put it into words, really. But this is what I heard about Fuad Abiyar. I heard that him, as a, as a businessman, he's very hard to work with. To be, to be more precise, to quote what I heard, he burns the bridges very easily. And if he keeps it like this, at this pace, in the end he's going to be all alone, basically. So I hope he watches this video. I know he has seen some of my videos. Maybe he can take this as advice and change something. Because, I don't know, we lost Nathan the Asher from the podcast. Then we lost Brad Wilkin. And now, unfortunately, it looks like we're going to lose Nick Walker. I don't care which supplement company Nick Walker represents. I don't care about that at all. What I do care about is having Nick on the podcast because Bro Chat will never be the same without him. And based on the, the history, he's most likely going to be out of that podcast. So it is what it is, guys. Unfortunately, this happened. I guess this is the reason why guys like Ian Valier, Guy Cisternino, James Hollister and many others would not sign with Hostile, even though uh, Ford wanted them to be the part of that company, because they're probably afraid what's going to happen if the contract isn't very good and they stopped working, they would probably be gone from the podcast. And Nick Walker took that chance, he risked it, and it didn't work out. Now he's going to be out of the podcast which is which is really bad, which is really sad for us fans and for him. It was a huge platform for him to promote himself and now he's most likely going to be out. I really want to know if these guys are actually going to stay friends and keep doing the podcast together, which I'm like 99% sure won't happen. Uh, we still didn't hear Fuad's story and his side, which is going to happen on his next uh, next podcast for sure. As soon as it happens, I will inform you guys, but based on what Nick had to say in his video, bro chat with Nick Walker is 99% over. It really sucks, but it is what it is. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. If I had to use only one supplement out there, that would be creatine. It's probably the most potent supplement out there, and Old School Labs has just the thing for you, it's called Classic Creatine. The prices went up this year because of the situation in the world, but Old School Labs didn't downgrade the quality of their creatine, it's still very high quality stuff. So the guys, the link is down below, if you use the code even, you get a 15% discount. And if you want to support me and my channel, this is the way to do it, this helps a lot, so thank you guys. Alright, off to more positive topics, this weekend, actually this Sunday, we have two pro shows, we have the Italy Tsunami Pro and we have the Legion Sports Fest in Reno. Uh, who are the favorites for that Legion Sport? Of course, at Italy, Tsunami, that's gonna be James Hollins here, an easy win, let's not even talk about that. I'm really curious to see what James is going to bring, that's gonna be interesting, we have no update so far, but we have an update of Jamie Johal, Jamie Christian, as you can see right here, this is his absolute best ever and he is my favorite to win legion even though justin rodriguez he's competing that's right justin is making basically a comeback of sort now as you can see right here jamie johal is bringing his absolute best ever he was never this conditioned and i gotta say in the past off season he made some serious gains he definitely filled out his frame a lot and this season we haven't really seen him completely peeled shredded but right now, he's definitely in his absolute best conditioning so far. And um, as he says in the caption, him and Milo Sharchev, his coach, are going to try to carb him up even crazier than so far. For Yamamoto show in France, they were carving him up with 5 freaking thousand grams of carbs in two days. 
which is probably not that much considering that he's like six foot five and I don't know like 300 pounds on stage but now they're gonna go even freakier but in the caption here they say actually Jamie says that after one day of carbs he already looks filled out so they probably won't push it too much because you know how it goes they're following situation they gave him some carbs and uh, he filled out nicely already so now the point is to maintain this kind of fullness and this kind of conditioning until the show day and uh, it's probably gonna require a lot of carbs They're just to maintain him right here because this body is an absolute machine and i love this physique i gotta say i love this physique because he's a tall guy he's not uh, like uh, i don't know five foot eight or nine like most bodybuilders he is a big big tall guy and he filled out his frame quite a bit since last year there is still more room as you can see right here when you're watching him alone you can see that there are gaps like his legs could be rounder or fuller uh, his upper back would be wider he could definitely gain more muscle in some areas but even like this he does look like a pro show winner you could argue that he deserved to win that Yamamoto France and now Legion Sports is coming and I think he's going to win that one I think he deserves to win it and when I say he needs to fill out his frame more imagine if he completely filled that frame out he's going to be he would be the Mr. Olympia winner basically he would just kill everybody everybody else would look like children next to him so you know i don't think he's going to do that i don't think he's going to feel out that much to be like as round as some of these shorter guys but the way he looks right now super super impressive and i think he's going to win legion for some reason justin rodriguez is hiding he doesn't want to show his package now he's uh, being coached by george farah yeah he no longer works with uh, aj sims the cement factory uh, after he decided to prep on his own without telling his coach about that and he failed miserably for Indy and New York Pro now he's working with George Farah and they don't want to show the conditioning we don't know what he's gonna look like you can see his legs this is the only update that we got so he's showing his legs a little and you can see that his conditioning looks I don't know okay you can't really make any kind of conclusion based on this really I have no idea what his upper body is looking like you can see that his legs are i don't know in okay condition i don't even know when this video was taken i don't know anything really but if this is recent i don't know i don't see anything crazy like i don't see some crazy vascularity crazy fullness but then again justin is not exactly known for his legs his legs are his weakest body part so i don't know if he looked good he would probably post something but then again maybe he looks at his absolute best ever and that's why he doesn't want to show anybody what he looks like he wants to surprise us all which i doubt which i doubt is the case he competed too many times this year and last year I think he's burnt out, this is him last year uh, at the New York Pro where he, I don't know, he plays like, I don't know, 6, 7, something like that, I don't even remember, but he was nowhere near the top, however, last year he was second, he almost won against freaking Nick Walker, it was actually really close, but uh, here at New York, he was way, way off, and he competes way too much, I'm sure his health is in horrible state, he is kind of unlucky, he tries to win these high level shows and he's always like very close to get it but he never really makes it and um, as you can see every year his physique looks worse in terms of aesthetics, it looks more and more rugged, his uh, waist is getting blown out, uh, he used a lot of Sintel in his legs so that ruined his aesthetics as well, uh, his arms are getting kind of deformed, so now at Legion Sports I don't think he's actually going to be a contender to, to challenge Jamie Johal, even though Jamie is much taller and like um, not as filled out as, as, uh, as Justin, I think he's going to beat him because he has freshness. He has aesthetics, he has a small waist, stuff like that. But if Justin shows up looking anything like this, for example, then I have to be honest, even though I'm a big fan of Jamie, it's, it's lights out for him because Justin is an absolute freak. He can get really conditioned and he's a monster, like he's really, really big. On stage, he's like 270, 275 at like 5 foot 8, 9, whatever. Like he's a short guy, but really, really stacked. So if he is conditioned and he brings that fullness that he can bring, uh, even though his physique is very rugged, not very aesthetic, he has like an amazing, crazy looking back and like back poses because of glutes and hamstrings and everything and all that thickness. Like if he brings 80, 90% of his game, 
he's going to win. But maybe he's not going for the win. Maybe he just wants some points because like he's third in point standing. Uh, and if he if he places second in this show, which I think is going to be the worst case scenario probably for him, he will still win enough points to go to the Mr. Olympia. And maybe there he will be at his 100% where he will peak and actually, uh, you know, try to bring his absolute best. Not this show. That's most likely... That's That sounds like a reasonable play. And I think that's something George Farah would do as, as a coach. So we'll see. We'll, it's going to be an interesting show because we have no idea what Justin looks like. And it's going to be a very interesting comparison between him and the giant, Jamie Johal. Oh, we got an update of Urs Kalecinski. That's right. At about 10 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, this is what Urs looks like as far as conditioning. As you can see, he looks pretty lean. He looks very lean. Is he ready to hit the stage? Of course not. There is still work to be done. But I have no doubt that this guy is going to be peeled out of his mind. Last time we saw him on stage, it was Arnold Classic. And he was shredded, man. He was really peeled, but he was flat. And I think that's why he didn't place as well as he could have placed. He was beaten by both Ramon and Terence. However, he did beat a former Classic Physique Mr. Olympia champion, Brion Ainsley. So that's, a, that's a success by itself. But I think he could have placed higher. And I think he's going to do better than Mr. Olympia if he doesn't come as flat as he did at the Arnold. Because he can get really conditioned. He can get shredded. At 10 weeks out, his glutes are already separated and lean, so he can be conditioned very easily. He just needs to prove to us that he can bring fullness along with that conditioning. And if he does that, where can he place the Mr. Olympia? Can he beat Chris Bumstead? Probably not. Can he beat Ramon and Terence? I don't know about that. That's probably like the best case scenario for Urs. If he comes really full and really shredded, he might challenge those two guys. Best case scenario... He can be second. I think that's like the best case scenario for everybody who is competing in Classic Physique. If there is Chris Bumstead, nobody is winning that show aside from him. So, best case scenario, Urs, if he is actually improved as it seems like he is, if he really improved his arms that much, and if he brings, again, the same conditioning like last year with better fullness, I think he can be as high as second. What do you guys think? You know what, whatever you think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.